morning. It is Saturday, June the 18th, 2022, and Sarah and I are back in the North Fork, the Tianaway River, up here just below Long's Pass. Uh, it is a much different conditions a month later. It's almost been exactly four weeks since we camped up here in unconsolidated snow and snowstorms. Uh, the weather is forecasted to be a lot better this weekend. A bit windier, but no snow. And the snow conditions right now are a lot better and more favorable for our uh, pursuit of the summit of Mount Stewart. Uh, last time it took us forever with exhausting work to get up here to this spot. Today we covered the two and a half miles uh, and roughly a mile and a half. And, uh, took a quick break here and we don't have much further to get to our next camp down in the Ingalls Creek drainage. So it shouldn't take us that long. We're just going to drop over the pass really quickly here, head down the north side. We should be setting up camp soon. I'm really excited. I hope we make it to the top this time. Here we go. We are crossing over Long's Pass, entering the Alpine Lakes Wilderness. We've climbed down to the snow below there and to the left. Drop into this basin here. And then head down into there. Down there, looking for a place to set up camp. Getting pretty interesting as we work our way through bows of conifers. Spring loaded and trapdoored by snowpack. <laughs> waiting to ambush us with booby traps. We have found the main trail. We have officially descended below 5,000 feet. And now we are going to follow this down another two or 300 feet. We should be at some pretty awesome campsites down in the trees. Right down in that valley. Going to be crossing the creek soon. Just look at a different perspective of Mount Stewart. We were talking earlier how it kind of resembles either an armadillo or a giant dragon. We can't make up our mind, you decide.
right after you cross over Ingalls Creek, you enter this very pleasant camping area. Lots of shade, lots of conifer trees, very cool. It was pretty warm up there actually coming down from that basin. And it's just nice to be in the canopy. You don't got to sleep on snow tonight. Camp is officially set. And now we tend to the matters of preparing lunch and uh, get some hot food in us. Get our energy reserves stored up for the big day tomorrow. It's definitely chilly down here in these woods. There's a breeze coming down from the pass, from the down valley, and uh, it's de definitely cooler than what it was up there. Luckily, below 5,000 feet, we can have fires here. That's exactly what we plan to do later on tonight. Um, we're just gonna finish up our lunch here, pick up our area, fall in those sleeping bags, get off of our feet, take a nice long nap, and then uh, later on tonight, might go recon the area that we plan on accessing the climbing route. It's good to know which way to go when it's dark. And then uh, come back here, make a fire. Tonight, the upper Tiana way. This rock right here. And there's our white bark pine clinging to life in its nutrient poor soil. This is Grano Diorite. Now it comes from molten rock, it's an igneous rock, but it's a pluton, which means poor underground. It's magma. Very slowly, very slowly encased and insulated underground. Okay. Um, now, unlike places like the Rosa Flow and the Elephant Mountain Flow in eastern Washington, the Columbia Basin, I talked about the, uh, the iron content of that lava. This rock, see how light it is, it's sparkly and shiny? It is very low. So it's on another end of the spectrum. It has a lot of oxygen and a lot of silica, which means uh, it is called a, a felsic, felsic igneous rock. The salt of the Columbia River uh, Plateau will all be nathan. Let me give you a closer look at the granodiorite so you can see the 
just how smart, how sparkly it is, and all the crystals that are in it. Here is a close-up of the granodiorite of the Mount Stewart batholith. It is an igneous rock. It is a intrusive pluton. This this magma cooled slowly underground. Each crystal, each color of crystal is a different element in the rock, in the mixture when it cooled. Now there's a debate as to where this rock came from. Did it dock head on with North America at a pretty much right angle, a 90 degree angle? Or, as evidence is showing, it may have docked further down, closer to Baja, California, and then rode a transform boundary north to where it is currently located. The evidence for this is the, the zircons, the element zircon in this stone. And uh, currently geologists have been researching those zircons and matching them up. I guess they're identical, you know, or they have a certain fingerprint based on where they were formed and they're measuring that fingerprint that, you know, the origin of the zircons, and they're finding that the zircons in this granodiorite matches zircons that we find, like down in Joshua Tree National Park in Southern California, the granites down there, or along Baja, California. Just crazy, crazy stories that make up the topography and the terrain of the places that we go climbing in. This fire here definitely did not take long to make. It makes it way easier when you got everything gathered, ready to go, and good dry tinder, <laughs> and a good fire source. All right, dinner is made, as well as the fire. It's starting to sprinkle, some clouds are rolling in. It's gotten a little bit more chilly. That's why the fire definitely helps. We're pretty much ready to get going tomorrow. We have a 2 o'clock a.m. wake up time, hoping to be out of camp by 3. Quick breakfast, quick gather of gear, and just go. And that should put us on the upper snow fields right about when the sun is coming up for that magical moment that we're all seeking. We're just going to enjoy the evening tonight. It's a really special moment right now the whole place to ourselves. and we're going to go to bed and get a good night's sleep. Good night, everybody.
have switched to crampons and have moved on to steep snow. broke out of the steep, steep Cascade Coolier. We took a break right here in this coal. The sun is starting to come out through the clouds. There's a lot of fog and mist ripping up over the summit. We are making our final approach on these final slopes the top. We are definitely in the clouds, and we are approaching the spot that we turn around back in 2020. So I'm guessing we are around 9,000 feet right now. Gives you an indication of how steep it is. And we should start to enter the summit ridge up there somewhere. Which way to go from here? 
the boot pack goes around this way. Heads off in that direction. I don't know if I want to go there because I don't know where it goes. But we have to get up there somehow. Okay, we just had a sit down powwow to decide what we were going to do. The clouds aren't going anywhere, they're going to get worse for the forecast. And uh, we've reached kind of an impasse going this way that leads into the north facing chutes. Our only other option is to climb up to what looks like a little ridge line up there and see if that's where we access the final traverse to the summit. All right, we climbed up that other way. And it definitely led us to a place that we want to be. It was steep, but very fun climbing. And now we're kind of at this, there's my ice axes right there, little flat area. And I believe that is the final summit traverse right there. And the top should be out there in that gloom. We just came up from a bunch of sketchy, steep, soft snow that way. Oh, I'm knackered. Above the clouds, though. And I think we're within the last couple of feet of the summit. I think it's right up there. I'm just going to wait for Sarah to come up here so we're safe summit together. So close. All right, Sarah has topped out on the summit of Mount Stewart. I'm going to go up and join her. Here we are on the 9,400 some odd foot summit. Mount Stewart. Took us three times to do it. It's a very steep precipice. Took us a long time to get up here. We left our camp roughly at about four o'clock this morning. It is 11 o'clock now and it's getting warm. The snow is getting soft. It's really bright. I thought it'd be more windy up here, but it's not. We're just above this sea of clouds. So we can't see any of the uh, mountains around us. It's still pretty incredible. Have to admit that's kind of a creepy view down the north face of Mount Stewart. It's nothing but snow and rock and gray, mysterious gloom. I'm not getting any closer to that edge for sure. All right, well that just about does it from up here on the summit of Mount Stewart. We snacked, we hydrated, uh, we're getting our last photos up here. And then uh, all this means at this point is half of the trip is over with. And we still got to make it back down safely. Uh, there's some pretty sketchy spots in there that we got to get through. Snow's getting soft. Uh, so we're just going to take our time and play it safe. And hopefully in no time, we'll be back down in the safety of the trees. What do you think of the summit of Mount Stewart? It's very white. <laughs> no, it feels really good to be up here. Finally. Well, we spent about a half hour on the summit, and now the most dangerous part of the climb begins, the descent.
this is the sketchiest part of this climb for sure, this side traverse. Uh, we're on this knife edge ridge coming down from the summit. Off to this side here it drops straight down, down the north face. And you can see Sarah over there side traversing along this steep slope. What's making it hard is the snow is really, really soft. So we can't get good footing. It's very slippery. And down below, you can just see how it just goes seemingly forever. We are barely on that boundary between where the clouds stop and the clear atmosphere above it begins. And we just got constant clouds blowing up over the top of the mountain here. We are not the only ones up here. You know, that's kind of joined by this group of four. And we're all kind of descending together now. It's uh, really steep when you can look at it without clouds. And that's looking off towards the enchantments, which are those peaks right there, covered with clouds. And this one right here is Prusik Peak. Way over there, I can see the town of Cleelum, and I-90 kind of goes right through there. And here's a bird's eye view of the Wenatchee Mountains. Definitely higher than all of them right now. You can see how lots of snow is holding on to the north facing aspects. We are making good time on the descent now. One last look. The upper climbing route of Mount Stewart. Pretty fantastic spot. All these spires of granodiorite. Very sparkly rock. Beautiful. Outstanding climb. We are back in the Cascade Coolier on the final chapter of our descent. We're going down through the main coolier, not the way we climbed up this morning. It's very steep snow over there. Uh, I'm not saying it's not steep in here either. We got to go down this gully right here, all the way to the trees, thousands of feet below. thicker down here. It's still just as cold as it was up top though, it feels like. Uh, all in all, we've been moving for almost exactly 12 hours it took us to do that whole ascent and descent. Uh, we thought we'd move a lot quicker. Um, you just got to be careful when you're moving through terrain like that. It was an outstanding climb. Fantastic steep snow slopes. We got to really practice with the ice tools today. We did some real front pointing on hard, frozen snow first thing in the morning. 
pretty much all the way up to the top. Um, there was definitely some sketchy, scary moments, that terrible traverse. It took us just as long to go down the mountain, pretty much as it took us to go up. The snow was not as frozen as it was in the morning. It was very deep, very post holy Lots of roly polies, lots of loose, wet avalanche uh, conditions or probabilities going on. Day's not over yet. We have to go back up to Long's Pass. I'd say the ascent of Mount Stewart was, I don't know, between four and a half and 5,000 feet of ascent and not a lot of distance. We didn't even, Sarah was counting her steps and uh, we didn't even hit 10,000 steps from the tent to the top today. Um, I guarantee you we will on the way out though. So we're gonna uh, eat some lunch really quick, hydrate, pack up camp, pack up our packs, and head back over Long's Pass for one last little bit of suck for the day, but we'll get through it. And uh, from there, just a few miles down to the car, and then home. Hopefully the weather lasts, and this is the beginning of summer, and our uh, nasty, wet, record-breaking cold spring is over. Um, we'd like to keep this roll going. This is a great trainer. We got, great, we got some great acclimatization up at that altitude, and hopefully we can take on a bigger mountain next weekend.